So Chris D'Elia was on Software Underbelly. Um, I'm not really too sure why, to be honest. It's a strange place for him to go. Because if you know anything about Software Underbelly, you know that usually it's the home of the profiling, the downtrodden, profiling the people who've kind of ended up on the bad side, of the, the wrong side of the tracks, and basically trying to give them a, a chance to kind of tell their story. You know, and I think it's a good opportunity. It's a good platform for that too. It humanizes. Oh, big up Sting, Stingagu, Stingagu. Big up you. I have to miss the live chat tonight, but big up Sauce and the chat. P.S. Lil Boom is guilty. Yeah, it's like of course he is. Big, big up Sting, Stingagu. Appreciate you. Thank you for the fucking um, what you call it, first super chat, brother. Appreciate you, and we'll catch you next time. No problem whatsoever. Um, I actually like Software Underbelly. I really am a big fan of it. I used to watch a lot of it before. I've kind of gone off watching it now, but not because of anything, just because, you know, you just watch stuff in spurts. But I think the highlighting of the downtrodden, the highlighting of the people who are wrong, under the wrong side of the tracks, the highlighting of the people who maybe have made some poor life decisions, I feel like it's really instructive. Um, I feel like it's really humanizing. And I just feel like it's really good in general, right? Um, I like the platform. I love everything about it. And, um, <clears throat> but I think... Because of sometimes, because of them going out of their way to highlight people who have been kind of affected by stuff like drugs and shit and, you know, prostitution, all that malarkey, I think you have to be careful when you interview people like Chris D'Elia. Because on one side, people can say, oh, but the interviewed Sharp, right? Sharp was on Software Underbelly. And before him being a, you know, a cultural commentator, podcast host, part of No Jumper, Sharp was um, a pimp, right? He was, he has, you know, he was basically a pimp on the streets of wherever he's fucking from. I think San Diego, right? I think if I'm not mistaken. And um, his interview was really good too, because it was the first time we kind of got um, understanding of what that world is kind of like through the lens of this guy that was talking to us and i think a lot of people in the comments even said oh this guy comes across really charming really you know um really kind of normal so people kind of was like oh shit now i understand why guys like this are able to you know get girls into this life or to basically you know whatever how that works so you basically got to see oh shit this is how somebody that would be a pimp actually acts it's not the caricature we see on tv of guys running around slapping bitches right it's more so just a guy that you know that kind of looks like sharp kind of doing that so I think that's a good, that was a good highlight of that world. But I think you have to be very careful because you're obviously interviewing a lot of victims of sex trafficking, a lot of victims of sexual abuse, a lot of victims of rape, a lot of victims of just neglect, whatever it may be. So having on somebody that's been accused of some pretty heinous crimes in terms of Crystalia and who's quite, you know, possibly worse than the pimp, it makes you kind of, it kind of puts your platform into disrepute a little bit. Now, I'm not for the whole like banning people from talking. But I feel like if your channel is meant to highlight victims or people who have kind of suffered because of the consequences of that lifestyle, I think it's kind of weird to interview somebody who's been accused of the levy of accusations that have been levied against Crystal Lear. And if, if the world was just, if we had a functioning or a fair court system or justice system, sorry, Crystal Lear would be in prison. Let's not cut around. Let's not be around the bushes. If the justice system wasn't fucked up and if the conviction rates for sexual abuse and harassment, all this sort of shit, not harassment, but well, sexual abuse and exploitation, all that sort of stuff weren't as lax as they are. And if Chris Lee maybe didn't come from privilege, he wasn't white, all this sort of stuff. I think that honestly, he would be in jail. Like think about just a regular guy like you guy in the, in the chat. Think if you were a, a, accused of what Chris Lee was accused of, would you still have a job? Probably not. Would you still be accepted by your community? Probably not. Would you uh, be running around doing interviews? Probably not. You'd probably be in fucking prison. You'd probably be in prison or on some registry somewhere. That's the really crazy thing about it. So that's my own little preamble for it. That's my only thoughts on it. I do understand why he's doing it himself. Obviously, he needs it. He needs to repair his reputation. Um, he's kind of um, <clears throat> maybe... <clears throat> maybe he suffered quite a bit because he didn't really talk i think that's the one thing i really didn't understand in the beginning why is he going quiet about this but then when obviously the documentaries came out it made sense why he never spoke about it because you know he looked guilty as fuck but maybe he did suffer because he didn't speak about it he didn't come out and talk and say his side of things that obviously made it hurt because i feel like that advice that people give to people is horrible i feel like especially in the content generation era you can't really get cancelled anyway if you have your own fans that like what you do, like in Chris Lear's case, the only thing he got fired from 
was mainstream Hollywood and Netflix. But he can easily have a career streaming, um, sorry, making content for his fans, recording podcasts, doing specials and shit. His fans don't give a fuck, right? He put a podcast, he put his, sorry, his recent comedy special up behind a paywall. He hasn't, I don't think it's on YouTube yet. I don't think he's going to put it on YouTube. So you can already tell um, the kind of lane that he's kind of going down. So I feel like if that's the case and your fans are your fans and you see a lot of Chris Lea fans, even on the subreddit, still defending him. I feel like if you get accused of what you got accused of, you probably owe it to your fans and to yourself to probably come out and say your piece. And the fact that he didn't say it was strange. But obviously, once once all the DLs or the allegations came out and we saw the recent documentary that came out about him, you understood why he didn't say nothing because, you know, hey, it was quite damning. Anyway, enough of my preamble. Let's watch it. Comedian interview with Chris D'Elia on Software Underbelly. Or react to it in real time because I haven't actually watched it myself. Let's watch it. Babadi boo, babadi boo. Exactly, exactly aristocrat, aristocrat, uh, sorry, aristocock, King Yeti. Our justice system gives people 15 years for selling drugs to other adults, but gives chomos two to three years for their first offense and shit. Exactly, exactly. So. This whole idea because you didn't go to prison you're not guilty is fucking insane as well i don't know why people are, you know that's become the collective fucking agreement as if like people don't get off on things as if like you know especially in america as if having you know good fucking defense lawyers doesn't actually help and having the money to afford them doesn't actually change your fucking. when i started watching your stuff it was like one of those things where i'm like oh yeah why has no one done this before in 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 this kind of way mm -hmm. And so when I see it, it's like, of course, th it's the best ideas. They're like right on the. When I started watching yourself, I was like, oh, my God, that's where I can find some fresh victims. I was like, why am I bothering on Snapchat and Instagram? I can just watch Software Underbelly, see loads of women on there who are very insecure, who have gone from who've gone through massive amounts of trauma, massive amounts of abuse, who are on the cusp, on the cusp of self-deletion whose confidence is right at the ground and i can just take advantage of them <laughs> the tip of the tongue it's like of course a photographer that takes beautiful shots should interview their subjects it's just, it, it's like I've, just, I've seen a million a million email messages people saying this is my idea i wanted to do this i'm like oh. yeah i know right, <laughs> you had yeah. to do it right right and it's hard to do yeah i can't i dude i can't imagine how how hard it is but yeah. yeah, there are some days that are just like you just. I know, dude. That's why I, I don't have any guests on my podcast. I just want to. I don't want to do. I don't want to deal with people. You know, and it's funny to say as a comic. I guess. <laughs> yeah, we know why you don't want to deal with people. We know why you don't want to deal with people. We see how you deal with people. We see how you deal with people, especially if they're north of fucking, if they're south of fucking nineteen years of age. We know how you are. Yes, but when did you realize you want to be a comic? Was it young? When did you realize you, you, you liked girls under 21? When did you realize there's something about 18-year-old pussy that just hits different? When did you realize you like to get girls branded? When did you realize... <laughs> <clears throat> um, you grew up in New Jersey, New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey, and I, I don't... I don't know if there was ever a light bulb moment. I, I, I just... I can't remember a time where I thought I would do anything else. I, I just like... I can't remember a time where I was not funny. Bro, fuck you. It's like remembering when I learned how to walk. I just... I, 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 I My whole family is so funny. <clears throat> and uh, it was just always our language. And so... Uh, we just thought... My, my dad tells a story that... <clears throat> When I was watching, I was on, I was, my dad was watching a movie, a Jerry Lewis movie, and uh, on, uh, on TV, and I was playing with my toys, and I, and Jerry Lewis was doing something silly, and I was, by the way, he, by the way, whenever people tell these stories, nine times out of ten, they're all fake, it's like when they ask people at, on American Idol, or on X Factor, oh, like, what, you know, what, what led you to singing, or whatever, um, when I was a kid, my mum used to play James Brown and my mum and my dad would be singing Tom Jones songs in the kitchen. And then I started just singing because of those inspirations. Like, shut up. Lies. People always fucking, 
people always do fucking um, revisionist history when it comes to their fucking upbringing to make it seem idealistic. There's always some sob story. When I was young, my mom was really ill and she only really got better when I started singing to her these church hymns and she liked my church hymns and then that's what got her to make her feel better. It's like, bruh, just say you sung one time, you like the voice, you like the sound of your voice and you started singing. All these fucking nonsense is like, yeah, when I was young, I watched fucking Eddie Murphy for the first time in Beverly Hills Cop and I was like, you know what? I want to be a comedian too, daddy. It's like, what? He, my dad was struck by the way I stopped playing with my toys and just was watching like... The my, my dad was struck by the size of my penis and then I couldn't understand why. Jerry Lewis movie and my dad said uh, and, and I said dad is this what is this guy doing and and my dad says well that's what he does that's his dad, his, his... dad did you know you could record snapchats dad did you know you could <laughs> he's an actor he's a comedic actor and I said uh, dad did you know the age of consent isn't the same in all states across America. <laughs> like, this is his job? And my dad said, yeah. And I said, and he makes money doing that? And my dad said, yeah, as a matter of fact, he makes a lot of money doing that. And my dad said that I took... Nigga. Nigga. Come on. Really? Nigga. Come on. a beat and I said huh is he Jewish or something is that why is he Jewish immediately came out of the womb like can you make money from this can I make a business out of this and then I went back to my toys and started playing and he he always credits that that was the moment that I realized that I wanted to be funny as a career which I don't know if it's true or not but no but that makes sense yeah it's a funny story that's yeah. how it happens yeah when you when you talk about being funny, you have to laugh in it. When you talk about funny, you have to laugh as well. It's just a prerequisite. That's I was thinking about being a comedian. I was like, yeah, that makes some fun. Like you, ha you just have to laugh when you talk about being funny. <laughs> like you know when you're fucking, you're like you got to go talk to your friend or something, and you're 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 driving along, and you're like, I'm gonna talk to my friend. I really gotta talk to him about this thing. I'm gonna say this thing, and then I'm gonna get to the point where I say that thing, and they're gonna say that thing, and then I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna wrap it up like that, and then you go, and like. I remember when I was on a a, a, a flight to. Uh, How about finish your point? <laughs> How about finishing your point? I think you realize midway through that you sound like a redact because having these kind of revelations, or at, at forty five years old, is fucking insane. To be fair, like what? What a great insight! Canada. I was in Air Canada, and they speak fucking French and shit in the flight. No way. Really? In Canada, they speak French. Didn't know that. And um, <laughs> and I feel like they do that to fuck with you. Like, they know I'm not French, and they come in, they're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't. And then they go, ah. And then they have to, so that you're already. Yeah, this is definitely a bit. 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 Definitely a bit. Oh. Airport, airport jokes, isn't it? That's the ones we always want to hear from comedians, right? I fly so much internationally domestically so stressful Ugh. get on a flight they haven't got my food ready they haven't got my flute of champagne ready yet the pillow's not been fluffed oh annoying they keep the lights on i can't close the door of my little you know private little bunk thing oh annoying having to then hire a car at the airport having to get chauffeur driven to the fucking hotel oh the bellboy doesn't want to pick up my bags oh the lift doesn't work oh the fucking room service isn't ready. Oh, that's what we want to hear. Relatability. Relatability. Pretty one down, you know? <laughs> and so uh, on Air Canada, they don't have fucking Wi-Fi. And I didn't know this shit. And we're like flying up to the sky. And you know, you're always like waiting. You're like, am I 10,000 feet in the air yet? Because I want like, they, like for some like. Like the Wi-Fi is up in the clouds. Like it's fucking everywhere, you know? But like you got to wait because they make up some bullshit about like eh, traffic control or whatever. And oh so... Oh my God, bro. These are the type of jokes that you tell to your friends in a fucking lunchroom somewhere. Or in, you know, 
like in the pub like over beers like and it's not even that funny really we're talking about the wi-fi sucks on planes is that what we're doing we're doing wi-fi sucks on plane jokes wasn't this story about bombing at a corporate gig and now he's in an airplane <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those bad movies on Tubi, isn't it? It's like a bad movie on Tubi. The plot just moves, jumps all over the place. Was he just talking about fucking doing a corporate gig and he bombed? Why is he not in an airplane? <laughs> I'm like looking out the window. I'm like, dude, I think this is over 10,000 feet. Like, uh, they better not not have Wi Fi because it's fucking 2023, right? At this point. And I'm like, I can't wait to ask this fucking flight attendant about the Wi Fi because. When she says that there's no Wi-Fi, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make them feel stupid for not having Wi-Fi. Like this is how the conversation's gonna go. So she comes up, and she starts. I, I was like, I'm gonna say, uh, whatever. What, I was like, <laughs> dude, I'm such a fucking idiot. I was like, I'm gonna get to the point where I could say like, where where I can say like, uh, where's the? I was gonna say, where's the Wi-Fi? And in my head, she was gonna say. Oh, it was going to put her back on her feet. So then I could say, it's 2023. And that will be the end of the conversation. Like, you know? So I said, she came by and I was like, I was ready. I was hot because I was like, I can't. First of all, this is a joke that isn't, this is a joke and it's a story that isn't true. But don't you find it funny that these comedians have such a disrespectful attitude for flight attendants and for airports and for airplanes and procedures and shit around it when those are the main vehicles that allow them to make all the money that they make don't you find that interesting that they look down upon these people working regular jobs and they want to chastise them they want to get into a bickering match they want to sun them they want to bring them there. like don't you find that interesting these guys fly on planes every single week to different locations all around the country sometimes internationally they need airplanes they need flight attendants that know what they're doing to get the, you know, so they can get to their place on time or whatever it may be. Yeah, they look down upon them so much. Don't you find that interesting? Can't believe there's not gonna be Wi-Fi. And I said, uh, there's no, I said, hey, uh, where's the Wi-Fi? And she said, you don't know? <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> and I said, what? And she said, we don't have them on these flights. And I was like, no, but, and in my head, I'm like, how the fuck am I going to get to the part where I say like, but it's 2023 and make her back on her feet. And the whole conversation just went to shit. And I was the fucking moron here because we don't have them on these planes. And it's just like, that's how life goes. Like, that's how. What? This is the point of the story. Where's the funny bit here? <laughs> what? <laughs> And that's how life goes. <laughs> what? <laughs> guess, guess what? Pardon? Pardon? <laughs> Como? Que? <laughs> <sighs> what the fuck was that story? <laughs> Is he going to get back to the bit about the corporate gig? <laughs> what happened with that? Is he going to get back to that bit? Or is that finished? <laughs> okay. <sighs> oh, you think you're going to go in, you're going to say this, and that's going to happen, and then this is going to happen, and then you got it all planned out, and then you go... And you say the thing you were going to say, and then the flight attendant says, you don't know? And you're like, I, I, I don't know what? <laughs> you lose. Just got to be ready for anything. So that was one of the hardest I ever bombed. But then the second half of that, I got him good. You warmed him up. I got him, and they ended up giving standing standing ovation at the end. So it's a it's a tale of redemption. But this is a good tactic from the Mike. Whatever his name is, Mark tactic from him. He's got him comfortable. He's really comfortable. You can tell because he's now in his um congratulations mode. He's like he's on his own podcast. He's rambling. He's just talking. I'm just an, I'm just an average guy. I'm just a blue collar comedian. 
your average working class comedian just here to make people laugh and to spread joy and put smile on faces right that's how he's got him comfortable now he's gonna hit him okay do you touch those kids <laughs> come on now he's got him got he's got him he's got him nice and warmed up now do you know what i mean his bussy's all nice and wet and shit, you know what I mean? He's smiling and stuff. His heart is bouncing up inside him. Let's go. Let's actually hit him last questions. Do you like underage girls? Yes or no? Were well, you trying to run a sex cult? Yes or no? Is your sex addiction just a cover for you being a fucking creep? Yes or no? Should you be in a just world, if you weren't privileged and didn't come from money, would you be rotting in prison somewhere? Yes or no? That's what we want to hear. Yeah, I had to figure out that room. You're never smarter than the room. Whether you're in that room or on an airplane, you're just, you're never smarter than Did Brian Callan know? Yes or no? In the room. But Did Brendan Schaub know? Yes or no? What's been the roughest thing? Was Whitney Cummings an enabler? Yes or no? You've had to deal with in your life. In my life, the roughest thing I've had to deal with was, uh, being... Somebody recording your Snapchats. <laughs> uh, what's the rough thing to deal with? Uh, cancelled uh and my life okay 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 sorry chat all right please please accept my forgiveness you guys were right this feels like a fluff piece i think you might have paid for it that was nasty that setup of that question was nasty that setup to that question was nasty the way he delivered it was nasty this feels like they went through this this feels like a script i apologize you guys are right. I think this was a paid interview or something. What's the hardest thing? Yeah, let's go back again when you ask the question. That was disgusting. Never smarter than the room. Whether you're in that room or on an airplane, you're just, you're never smarter than the room. But what's, what's been the roughest thing you've had to deal with in your life? In my life, the roughest thing I've had to deal with was uh, uh, being canceled. Canceled. Uh, and my life blowing up um a hundred percent it was the hardest thing i've had to deal with um be awesome. i would say yeah it's got to be terrible you know being in the public eye yeah and it's being, being singled out like that <laughs> oh he's doing too much he's doing too much that's got to be terrible you being in the public eye how about the victims bro how about the fucking victims <laughs> That's got to be terrible, being horny so often. Having a boner all the time has got to be so hard, bro. How, 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 how hard is it to have a boner? To be constantly hard and to want to dominate and exploit, you know, and manipulate and take advantage of young, vulnerable women. It must be so fucking difficult to try and keep that shit under wraps. Fuck. It's the... Yeah, it's... It's horrible. It's um. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's. It's funny because there's never a. Um, this was a time when a lot of guys were being taken down. Right? Taken down. Yeah. Taken down. Nah. The, 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 there's not a terrible. It's not a because everyone's getting taken down. You got taken down. You got taken down because you're a fucking piece of shit. That's why. It wasn't some collective fucking thing to take down all men you were cancelled because you did some pretty reprehensible things and victims spoke up about it people learned about the things you did behind the scenes and it was kind of nasty so you know people say nope 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 no more netflix for you it's not because people were trying to take you down because you're some powerful dude somewhere that's probably part of the reason why he never actually ended up in jail because in the grand scheme of things he's quite insignificant not that he's not famous but he's not that famous you know that's probably the reason why he never actually you know, went to prison or anything like that crazy because, you know, it's not that big of a deal, really, in the grand scheme of things. Crystal, who is he really? But if he had, if he was actually more famous, he would, he would be in real, real trouble. I feel like because there's, there's legitimately what they say in the documentary. There's like actually like a thousand, like over a hundred women came forward to that documentary guy. I think who made the documentary to him, right? I forgot who, what his name is. Let me actually see what his name was. I think over a, f a f hundred women came out and said something. Um, Carl Anderson, yeah. He's got 1.1 million views at the moment. Over 100 women came out and said something to him. So, for sure, you know, he's lucky that he's not, he's not more famous. There's not a... Um... It's always weird. It's, it's always interesting talking about it because there's no... 
I still feel like there's no real right way to talk, talk about it without people just, you know, being angry at yeah, all they're, sides they're, of they're, it. They're, both sides have you know a, what I'm a stand saying? on it. Well, the truth is people lie. People um, lie, yeah. And, uh, and, and it's... People lie. So everybody's lying. <laughs> Interesting defense. You know, whatever the media makes something out to be is not the truth. It's just not, no matter what way it's going. It's just, um, and when you're someone that is in the media, good or bad, you you see that. But I think the com the common person doesn't. Um, and it's 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 really wild. It's really wild. Um, that's the hardest thing that I've I've dealt with, and. Um, It's also, look, when something fucked up happens, you can, uh, pick up crash. Is anyone talking about race and t-shirts by chance? <laughs> pick up crash. You can make anything the best thing that ever happened to you, really, as long as you learn and figure out how how to do that and it's all up to you very often the worst thing that happens to someone is the best thing that ever yeah happened. we know that's not the truth though we know in that if he what he really wants to get back into hollywood this is why he's doing this so him acting like it was a thing happened to him is a lie he doesn't want to be at home with his wife playing fucking happy family he doesn't want to be posting about his kid all the time on social media. He wants to be out in the streets, allegedly raping and diddling, a fr and, you know, to his heart's content. That's what you'd actually would want to do, but he can't. So he has to pretend to play this. You know, he has to he has to put up this, you know, this. Um, he has to put up this fucking fake persona of him being a wholesome guy and down to earth, and I'm just trying to make people laugh and put people smiles on faces and shit. He doesn't want that. He wants to be out there. That's what he wants. This is why this interview is happening. So. Don't believe any of that shit, in my opinion. And, you know, look, I mean, I know who I am, and the people who are very close to me know who I am. And um, you look at this world. These are some really interesting ways to approach these questions, because surely... If you're this guy and you have this platform, surely you owe it to yourself to just ask him, like, but how about the victim? How, what, what do you think about the victims and what they had to say? Is there any part of you that maybe regrets some of the interactions or how people felt about them? Because even if you think you're innocent, isn't there just a follow-up question when you're the interviewer to be like, but what about the other, other side? Because he thinks they're all lying. Okay, cool. You think they're all lying. But how do you feel about what they had to say and their detailed description of how it was to be with you and shit and their encounters what's your interpretation of that or what's your feelings around that what's your views on those type of things he, he cannot answer if he doesn't want to but just letting him waffle like this is wild bro especially for this type of level of platform well then how divisive it is and how black and white it is and as an adult you know it's you know it's not you know it's not black and white, you know? You know it's shades of gray, but then you go online and it's black and white. And it's very easy to let the darkness swallow you um, when you're, when you see that shit. Maybe as a, maybe as a, maybe that's the benefit of being a narcissist, isn't it? Maybe it's big up Austin Casey. <clears throat> if this interview was edited by a Gen Zer where they take out all the pauses, it would be 20 exactly, minutes long. Exactly, 100%, 100%. It's fucking excruciating. He's trying to sound, he's trying to sound considerate. He's trying to sound intelligent. He's trying to have coherent thoughts. He wants to make sure he is considering everything that comes out of his mouth. But the pauses are excruciating, bro. Excruciating. Because he's also doing it as a form of like, 
as a form of fake sincerity. That's what he's trying to do. I'm just like, notice how, how he's sitting even. He's sitting a bit more hunched like that, doing this whole like fake voice. Like, I'm just sorry. Like he's trying to, you know, body language wise, I'm just sorry that I like to touch girls, especially young ones. Um, I'm also just a humble comedian from humble, broke, working class roots. Life rips. You know, like he's doing all that shit as well. So it's all part of the, it's all part of the fucking performance. Um, because you're thinking your career's over. You're thinking a lot of things are over. You're thinking. You're not even. Also, narcissism helps because, in any other profession, any other walk of life, when people get accused of what they get accused of, or what you got accused of, sometimes you want to just self-expire, and sometimes it might be the right thing for humanity that you do. Because you might not end up in prison, you might you know get away with it because the you know maybe there's not enough evidence to charge you. But sometimes if you're a person with actual with a soul, you might want to self expire because you're like you know what, I can bring no good to the world. You know like <laughs> I'm morally bankrupt, right? Um, I'm compromised. I am broken. There's nothing, not nothing can heal or fix me. So the self expiring is the right thing. But when you're a narcissist, one of the things that it does. It's like a self-preservation. You're always going to look after yourself. So the thought of self-expiring doesn't, what? But I'm funny. I'm the bestest. People love me. You know? I want to live forever. Like, there's never, it never enters the narcissist's mind to, to be like, you know what? I need to basically, oh, this ring card girl. Damn. Yeah. So I get it. Thinking, you're feeling, you're. It's never as bad as you think it is when it happens, whatever that thing is, you know? Oh, it's bad. It's definitely My bad. son falls down, hits his knee. He's crying, and I know it's okay, and he no, doesn't because he's never hit his knee before. Um, and uh, I always tell him, like, buddy, it's all right. The worst part's over, you know? And uh, you think, if I'm honest, um, you think... Okay. If Something honest, that I would go always go back now you're to. Honest, yeah? now you're no matter how if hard it was, um, during that time, I would I would say like, everything's okay because no matter what, I can I can just stand up and my life and <laughs> and not feel this right. Should have done it, mate. Should have you should have followed through. And I would constantly think of that like. Should have done it. All good. Do it now. Everything's fine. Still you can always time. end your life. Do it now. It got that bad for you. That's not bad. It's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, probably on help. Do it now. Mm -hmm. Was there some truth in the allegations? I was... <laughs> the body language. <laughs> the body language. The body language. The body language. Look at him now. Protection. Look, he's trying to protect his neck. Don't cut, out. Don't cut me off. Don't cut my head. Don't cut my head. Look at the body language. Don't cut my head. <laughs> the body language. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's go back one more time. Let's go back one more time. One more time. One more yeah. time. Um. Mm -hmm. Was there some truth in the allegations? I was a womanizer. Um. And that's the truth. Um. Womanizer. So they lied and you're a womanizer. The womanizer defense. I just love, I just love to fuck. I'm sorry. And I'm really good at it. I'm sorry. What can I do? I just like to fuck, man. I just like to fuck. It's not my problem. I just like to fuck. Okay. Whether they're awake, conscious, consenting, non-consenting. Of age, underage, I just like to fuck. <laughs> and no, I mean, what I was canceled for was is was not the truth. Uh, um, but it doesn't matter. It, that's just perception is kind of a lot of people. Um, this guy's a piece. I was of out shit. there, piece of shit, ha having sex uh, all the time. Uh, with with people I barely knew, you know, and that's I realize how <laughs> I 
I'm just too sexy. I'm just too sexy. It's not my fault, man. It's not my fault. They all like me. I'm just too sexy. All the sexy guys in the world always get rape spectacular allegations. Every sexy guy you know gets accused of rape. Every guy that girls like to fuck is also a sexual predator. Is also a fucking abuser. Is also a rapist. Is also a pedophile. Every sexual, every guy that has a high sex drive is an abuser. It's just the facts. That's what we know. I love chigs. And chigs love me. I'm Chris D'Elia, Air Canada. Life rips. Ree. That can get, you don't know, know people's. You don't know people, so you, how do how do you know, if you don't know them, you don't know what they what they're. So all one hundred, all one hundred of them lied. Every single one of them, from one to one hundred, they all lied, and they're all conspiring against you to bring you down. The big powerful Crystal Leo, right? Leonardo, Di, Leonardo DiCaprio level of fame. Fuck off. What they're like, and what you know, it's. I was definitely like, and I had a. It's actually way more, be like, honestly, it's actually way more believable when someone like a Chris Talia gets those allegations than a Leonardo DiCaprio. It's actually way more believable, even though you should probably, you know, assess all the information based on what you see, read it, whatever, the information and make your own mind up. If somebody comes out and alleges Chris Talia did something, it probably happened. He's nobody in the grand scheme of things. He's nobody, really. So, so, to, so to think that 100 women plus all conspired against you is so fucking delusional chip on my shoulder too i was like well they don't, nobody likes me they just think they they they, they, th they like me now they wouldn't have liked me when i was being fucking bullied in high school they just like me now because i'm fucking the bully i'm on tour i'm i'm, I'm famous the bully you know news. and i remember having a chip on my shoulder about that and thinking uh It was just a weird, wrong, fucking stupid way to live. Like, I was all consumed in all of it, you know? I would go, I would make people laugh, and I would try to get laid. Celebrity's and, a intoxicating drug, isn't it? it, it, it what's that? A, a celebrity is an intoxicating yeah, drug. Yeah, man, I, I would. Uh, Especially for a young man. I wish, I wish I fuck. Okay. Now I know why the, the comments are so bad or the, the, the votes are so terrible. This guy's doing way too much padding. He's doing way too much co coaxing or whatever that word is called, right? This, this host, this interviewer, man, for your platform, you can't do this, bro. You're sympathizing with this guy. You're sympathizing with him. You're sympathizing with Chris Delia. This is the guy that you want to sympathize with. There's a story you can tell around the abuser and the victims of these type of platforms where you can maybe give the abuser, maybe if, if a girl was to come on and talk about how she suffered at the hands of a pimp, I think there's actually something quite beneficial to have the story of the victim said, I suffered at the hands of this pimp, and then actually have the pimp come on, who can maybe talk about the realities of being involved in that line of work and kind of give his reasonings as to why he does it and why he does it in the way that he does it, and why maybe somebody like that girl could feel like the way she did. You know what I mean? Even though they'll, it'll be really toxic and it'll be really fucking, you know, it'll be really fucking um, traumatizing for people to witness. I think it's actually quite a lot of benefit to have that in there. But this guy, he's not even, he's not even accepted what he did. He's not come to terms with the monster that he is. He's still got this fanciful idea in his brain that he's a good dude. He's not a good guy. I think the pimp would actually be conscious that he's not a good person and would understand how he's viewed by society and will be able to somehow still be okay with to talk about that thing. Whereas this guy hasn't accepted the bad guy that he is, you know? He hasn't accepted the things that he's done. He hasn't come to terms with it. He's still in a state of delusion, denial. So this is why you get this interview. So to coax somebody like this who isn't even being honest with themselves is pretty diabolical to be honest especially given the platform so far underbelly is about radical honesty it's about 100 percent truth sometimes it's uncomfortable to watch that's why sometimes i stop watching it i think sometimes this sort of stuff is like watching um videos about skid row 
there's only so much you can handle that sort of stuff like seeing that abject poverty seeing that hope hopelessness that's people just you know at the wrong that people end up at the wrong side of the tracks because it's just whatever it's hard to watch that stuff all the time but the good thing about it is that it's honest it's a mirror up to society like look these are the people that are out there this also could be you you know it kind of keeps people like it kind of maybe allowed you to be somewhat humble right to kind of understand okay cool even though i don't have the things that i would love to have at least i'm not i have not ended up on that side of things because i could also be that person because it, it sometimes you know but this guy's not even being honest come on bro Fucking, i wish it's a weird thing because it's like everyone thinks it's the goal is to be famous. Um, and it's not bad. It's just there are good and bad things to everything. And uh, I... It's just hard. Pick up NJ Ranger. Red Octagon, the cap. Red, Red octagon, octagon, the cap. cap. Red Octagon, the cap. Red Octagon, the cap all 2024 long <laughs> big up nj ranger big up nj ranger you can't surround yourself with people that are just like you're great because then you'll become an insane person because you're not great all the time dude i just realized something mark is probably going to interview the one of the chris's victims next he should but he's probably going to grill them more than he grilled chris so it makes this conversation mute if you're going to get the victims on there to retell their story to retell their trauma you owe it to them to put this guy's feet to the fire a little bit just just coaxing him in this in coaching him in this interview you know, sympathizing him in this way is kind of gross. And then to get, then then when the victims come on, you're grilling them for fucking, you know, um, for details and shit. For, for specifics and shit. That's a little bit fucked up. So if he does interview the victims, I hope he goes soft on them too. And just lets them speak and whether they want to say, they want to say, they don't, they don't. But I've got a feeling if he has guess the victims, he's going to grill them way more than he did Chris. I remember thinking like, I remember too, my, my dad, when I was uh, 'When I was younger and com coming up in before I even really was any name or had any kind of people come see me, my dad would say, um, "You have to be careful because people are going to start to like you, and they're not going to know you." And it's very easy to get a chip on your shoulder. And um, don't let that consume you. And, and, and I knew everything when I was younger. So I didn't really listen, you know. And uh, it's kind of just what happened. I just, I, yeah. What are the worst sides? Worst aspects of, or what are the worst things about going through something like that, being canceled? Your family's got to. Yeah, the worst thing about one of one of the worst things about going about everyone finding out what makes your dick hard. That must be the worst thing. Everyone finding out what makes your dick hard, and then them finding out what makes your dick hard is underage girls. What makes your dick hard is domination. What makes your dick hard is non-consent, allegedly. That's what is hard. About um going through something like that is uh, people think that they think that you're you're who you are online you know and that your <laughs> Instagram is reality and you show the good moments on Instagram not I mean, I, I was off the internet for a year or so. Um, 
No, you won't. And you it wasn't the, good. Yeah. It was only saw, bad. And the, the one of the worst parts, though, about it is that they think is that people. I don't think I don't think that they realize how much that stuff doesn't just affect. It doesn't affect only you. It. It. it, it um, I think that's the whole point. I think that's the whole point. I think the whole point is people want it to affect everybody around you because you're a piece of shit. When you get accused of piece of shit things, they just can't understand how somebody like that can actually be okay with, you know, have a family and shit and, you know, whatever. People just want to, okay, if, if they can't attack you personally, you're not there and you're off the internet, then they're going to give it to somebody else. If anything, it's pretty irresponsible to get off the internet and let your family take bear the brunt of everything. That's that. That's the actual most deplorable thing. You hide away and let your friends and your family and your partner bear the brunt of your allegations. That's actually the more cowardly thing, to be honest. It it affects your uh, it affects your dad. It affects your mom. It affects your oh, it affects your uh, mommy because you like to rape and do do. Your family and your loved ones. And, I'm a uh, bit of power, allegedly. Feel bad for me. You, it's very hard to figure out how to put your house on fire out uh, when people are mad at the thing that's not the problem, you know? What? Um, What's the problem then? You know, I, 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 uh, huh? What is the problem then, bro? People are, you know, people would be, oh, whoever, who, whoever said the comment about the pauses, now you maybe notice it, man. Fucking hell. This is kind of excruciating, isn't it? Now you've made me notice the pauses. I can't unnotice them. And it's like, God almighty, bro, just spit it out. No one thinks you're intelligent. No one thinks you're profound. Just get to the fucking point. Oh. Angry at a certain thing that I, I, it's just, as, as, as that isn't true. So how, this is why I got so deep in the, in the woods of it. I'm like, I don't even know how to fix the right thing because people don't know. People don't know what is actually happening. So um, that's why I. That's why I. Um, that's why I couldn't really. This interview would be far better if he was just honest. Yeah, that's why I wanted to... Honestly, if he just was honest and was able to say, there might have been some instances in my life where I skirted the line, right? But, like, it, like just be honest. Like, I like to fuck. Girls liked me. I like girls. And it's just an unfortunate side of that lifestyle. Sometimes you get into some dicey situations. Like, if you actually spoke about it honestly, and be like, yeah, but there are some people in there who are clout chasers, like, and actually get under the offensive. It probably would have been a far better interview. But this is just, come on, bro, come on, come on. Round Nick, no Magni is about to win. No Magni is about to win. No Magni with a ground and pound is about to finish. Go on, Neil Magni. Go on, Neil Magni. Go on, Neil Magni. Go on, white boy dead. Yeah, fucking hell. We back, baby. We back. We back. We fucking back. Huh. Big up Neil. That's why I, I didn't want to. That's why I wanted to. Um, yeah, that's why I wanted to end my life. But um, I love how he doesn't say the word suicide as well. Pussy. Pussy shit. Um, ooh, who's that woman in the crowd? Who was that baddie in the crowd? Big up Austin Casey. I'm calling it right now. As your slef diagnosed ADHD is not real or you wouldn't have stomached this interview for so long, lol.
<laughs> in case you don't realize what Austin Case is saying, one stream, I was switching between tabs too often or too much, and I had loads of coffee and shit. And for some reason, I just decided I had ADHD. <laughs> I was like, I've got, I've got so many tabs open. I must be special. I've got ADHD. You know, like I gave myself one of those like Gen Z, you know, fucking self-diagnosis. You know, I'm just so creative. I must have autism. You know, I must be autistic. I'm just so creative. I've got dyslexia. Yeah, dyslexia. <laughs> you know, <laughs> ADHD. I'm depressed. <laughs> I'm a psycho. <laughs> Austin <sighs> Casey. No, you know why it is. I would have put. I would have ended it, but I started it, so we have to finish it. My seeing like my dad and like my my wife, and I had just brought a child into the world. Um, <laughs> he's a shit actor man he's a terrible actor these pauses I just brought my child into the world sigh long com com um, long completed thought you know of your kid look up sly smile reminding think of the good moments he's a terrible actor you can see all the points you know <laughs> I don't know. It was just, um, it was, it's weird. It's been four years now and I, I was just out having a coffee with my wife. <laughs> oh, he done all the notes. Redemption, victim, child, marriage, wife. He's hit all the. He's hit them all. He's hit them all. It was a beautiful. It's a beautiful day, and um, someone said, "Pedo." It was so nice, <laughs> and we were smiling and shit. Mm. And to 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 be in this room now and talk about that and think about the feeling, and to like force myself to mm. not make a joke of it, which is what. I'm... Why would you want to make a joke of it? To force myself not to make a joke of it? Like, what? <laughs> I was told to do in rehab. Is, uh... It's difficult, but... I guess it's necessary. Not... I know, I don't know. I, I, I just... I just, I just want to, I want to be, I want my sons to be proud of me and shit. And I thought that that was going to be through my status and stand up and all that, but uh, it's not, it's just going to be through who I am and they're going to know who I am and I don't know, man. It's just all such a fucking... I hate to say something so generic or like hashtaggy, but like, man, life is so fucking crazy. And it's, there's so much like love and pain and, and, and in it. And, and, and it's so real and, and palpable at some This is quite depressing, isn't it? He's only realized what life is truly like because he got cancelled this is the first bit of like pushback he's ever had to you know he's the first hurdle he's ever had to encounter in his life for real for real and he's having these revelations these come to jesus moments in his what mid 40s that's one of the negatives of being a, a nepo baby being a nepo baby or growing up in privilege one of the difficulties of it is that usually 
your parents are not going to want you to go through what they went through or they're going to try and make your life as easy as possible to help you but they're actually not helping you that's a problem and then you end up in your mid-40s realizing like life is so rich and amazing when you stop thinking about yourself and you try and build a legacy that doesn't just revolve around your career and you try and be a better member of society and try and contribute and it's like okay times and oh god <laughs> I, I you know jesus yeah i fucking hate going to therapy i go to so much therapy and like the twists and turns and the ups and downs i of just life fucking or, hate it bro why is, that picture? why is that picture here is he is he uh what, what is he crying why is that picture here is he crying like, oh, don't you just love going to therapy? It's like, dude, what are you talking about there? What are you talking about there? You know? I wonder why he doesn't like going to therapy. I wonder if it's because he gets pushback. I wonder if the reason why he doesn't like to go to therapy is because he gets pushback. I wonder. I wonder if it's because he gets pushback. He gets somebody grilling him, asking him questions, dive a bit deeper, introspective. He doesn't like that. So that's why he doesn't like going to therapy. Oh, Uche says, um, they do this every episode as it's a pan down. Okay, cool. You're still my a young bad. man. You got my plenty bad. of years my ahead bad. of you. Nah, I just get dumber, bro. What, just... What's been your favorite point of your career? My favorite point of my career is, uh, it was probably when I did my last special. Um, and you're getting better. You know what? Because I see, I see all the, I see all the dissenting voices in the stream chat. So I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna do a poll. I'm gonna do a poll. What do you guys think? I want to hear what you guys think. I want to hear what you guys think. There, as it as years go on. I I feel that way. Your delivery, your timing. Oh, thank you. Oh, I, I didn't know if you were. I thought you were asking me that. Uh, yeah, no, I I do feel that way. Thanks for saying that. Um, I feel like I'm getting better. Uh, I I I feel like. Thanks you have to use that. your experiences. At, at some point, look, I, you know, I, 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 I was and am a silly motherfucker. And when I did stand up the first half of my career, I was like, I just want to make people laugh. I don't give a fuck about this. Oh, the truth is what's funny. And now, uh, you know, you, you, you got to get to a point where I've done four, f five specials. It's like, okay, what else is there? I'm not just going to talk about some silly fucking type of person that it's type of people blanketly. And, um, so I, I used my experiences and I started talking about it and um, I found the humor in it and I, I knew it was going to be the hardest thing I ever did artistically and uh, it was and I'm really proud of it. So the last one, that, my last special that came out, Grow or Die, is probably the, the, the thing that I'm, I'm most proud of. Yeah. How can you be proud of that? It's terrible. How can you be proud of that? It's fucking terrible. You, you write your own material? Yeah. I write my own material, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, we know, trust me. I just kind of think about it and then go talk about it on stage. We yeah. know. What, what, what helps you create? But it helps you come up with really great stuff. Uh, pressure. So there we go. So there's, so there's no pushback. There's no pushback. This is it. There's no pushback. Now we move on to his comedy questions and shit. This is it. So I guess I can end it there, right? Because there's going to be six minutes of fluff. Okay, cool. Whew. Terrible interview. Um, I'm surprised that he did this. That um, The host, the owner of the platform, Mark, the soft behind the belly i think for chris delia was important to do because obviously he needs to rehabilitate his image i personally think this is part of the rollout for his um redemption arc and for him to come back into you know the cultural zeitgeist and for him to take part in the entertainment industry at large i think so whether it happens or not will may remain to be seen but i think they're trying to rehabilitate him to get him back on screen again because you know he was a fame kind of a famous guy before and there's not a many, there's not a lot of them that they can take a risk on who people would like to see. So they probably want to take a punt on him again. Enough, probably enough time has passed. People, 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 people probably forgot about it. Um, but as an interview, it's pretty insulting to the victims out there. You know, um, especially considering the platform is mostly for focusing on victims, right? There's a lot of victims on there of abuse of all kinds um, who probably would feel a little bit, you know, would feel a little bit aggrieved at this interview especially because he wasn't really pushed back or anything or probed so um yeah 
fluff interview, bit of bullshit, but what can you do? Um, let's actually see some of the responses on the comments down below. Because I think this will be interesting to see what the soft white underbelly community are saying. Because a lot of these people watching these videos are people that usually watch the videos on this platform, right? I don't think there's going to be a lot of like random people checking it out. I think the majority of them will be actually soft white underbelly fans. Let's see what the fans have to say about this. Um, the first pin, it's a pinned comment actually. A pinned comment by soft white underbelly. Oh, for a pinned comment, that's got a many likes, isn't it? For a pinned comment, it doesn't have a lot of likes. It's got a lot of no that's not a, that's not a good amount look at the look at the pin comment and look at the comment underneath 315 likes and this has got 99 this tells me everything about this comment but let's read it anyway the pin comment says innocent until proven guilty twitter isn't a courtroom none of these women had anything to say until one tweet about a character on workaholics and you went viral none of these screenshots shared suggest any wrongdoing in fact, there's more evidence that shows that he rejected women under 18. Wow. This person is, okay, interesting. Does that mean that he's not a sex pest? No. The guy clearly had a problem and he's always acknowledged that. No, he hasn't. He's not always acknowledged it because he never said it before. What are you talking about? But that's not what he's been accused of. He wasn't cancelled for his true problems. He wasn't cancelled for what is his true problems or for what his true problems were sorry strangely there's a number of men who love to hate this guy but refuse to acknowledge that young women are hot uh what the biggest porn category is teen using porn as a justification for sexual abuse is very insane i'm not gonna lie very insane i don't know why this guy pinned this tweet but that second paragraph is nuts that second paragraph is absolutely insane. Furthermore, since he's returned to comedy, not one of his alleged underage victims has ever come forward to call for justice. None has ever filed charges. The only people that appear to be hurt or broken by all this remains to be Chris. Chris is the true victim. The haters online are only people that are upset about something so complex and nuanced. Watching a YouTube documentary doesn't mean you're an expert. Facts are important, but trolls online are forever. Yeah, I think, I think if you if you did a if you did a if you did a investigation on that guy's PC, you'll find out some shit. That is a wild statement. Okay, cool. Next person, Chris hasn't given over. Sorry, Chris hasn't given over to complete humility yet. You listen to other interviews of those who have hit rock bottom and it just seems like everything Chris is saying is still guarded and still curated. Yeah, guess why? Because he's lying. That's why. If you feel like he's being guarded, if you feel like he's being, you know, he's being curated, he's not being honest, it's because he's what? Lying. This felt like 20 minute interview that Chris stretched out over an hour. This person agrees with Austin Casey. And the fuss and a few other people who didn't like the interview. <laughs> this interview was funnier than any joke he ever told. He came alive once he was able to talk about others, but wasn't able to get a word out when he came to talk about accountability and expression of his truth. Oh, that is very true. I like this. I'll sum up an hour interview in a word. Careful. A whole, a whole lot of sighs and silence. I have learned little to nothing except how extremely careful he is to share the point of being interviewed for an hour and the viewers learning basically nothing about him except how careful he is about being interviewed post cancellation. Exactly, exactly. If you're going to do these kind of interviews, you might as well just be really honest and really go for the jugular. Well, who's this fighter? She's taking a lot of pauses outside. Talk about pauses. What's she doing? Is she praying? Fuck, okay. Um... This whole thing felt like an audition for a movie. Interview starts at 36. Okay, cool. This is funny. I got like that one. Maybe I should have done that when I was watching the fucking stream. This went exactly as you'd expect. Legend has it, if Chris says, I remember five more times, Robin Williams will appear out of the genie bottle. <laughs> wow, what a performance. He really is a good actor. Love how they kept what they got. Sorry. Love how they kept what he got cancelled for super vague and ambiguous. For him to immediately deny that he did anything wrong or worth the backlash, 
There's receipts and evidence of he was creeping on high schoolers. It's plain and simple. He can help his tarnished reputation and career by just admitting what he did and realizing that it was very wrong and grow from it denying it just makes him look worse and shows that he doesn't realize that he did was wrong trying to play victim and poor and poor me nonsense comedians are supposed to be telling the jokes not becoming the jokes exactly Ig fucking exactly this interview may be chris's biggest bomb on stage the calculated responses appear to be rehearsed, not genuine. Mark is right when he says that the best interviews are those when the subject is brutally honest and oneself. Only then does the subject become someone that the audience can genuinely empathize with and forgive. Chris still has some work to do. It's never happening. Wondering how much of this is going to be a performance or an actual interview. Blah, blah, blah. So everyone agrees. Everyone agrees. Um, the interview was terrible. I'm also going to give it a down vote for wasting my time and being an absolute nonsense piece of journalism or whatever it was absolute complete waste of time um a fluff piece for somebody that doesn't really deserve being fluffed it is what it is it is what it is what are you guys saying in the stream chat about it what are you guys saying they should interview steve harvey's <laughs> old trope exactly <sighs> nonsense i love that one facts mark pinned it exactly the, the the terms victims and haters are interchangeable in the statement exactly literally the only non-hate comment was pinned exactly seems normal exactly the fuss exactly 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 anyway let's move on let's move on that was excruciating i i do apologize but you know we had to get through that we had to get through that we had to get through that we had to 